Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday edition of our humble online Bible study called Red Talks. Maayong gabi from Cebu. Good evening, everyone from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And till the ends of the earth, it is our privilege to be part of this humble online Bible study every Tuesday and Thursday. And we call it Divine Kwentuhan. Magandang gabi po sa inyong sa lahat. Hello, Sister Anita, Sister Jane, Ati Marcel, Ati Myra, Kuya Jojo, Ati Belen, Ati Lebi, and all of you, Ati Myra, Sister Cleo, Brother Saldi, and Sister Rhea, of course, and everyone who's very excited to join us in our episode 8 or finale for our The Blessing series this July 2022. Yay! Palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon because in the last seven episodes, His presence is overwhelming in each of our homes. Salamat po, Lord, sapagkat ini-enjoy namin ang iyong mga salita. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful messages of the blessing series, the Beatitudes. Yan, pakicomment po yan sa ating comment section, Beatitudes or which is part of the Sermon of the Mount. By now, we already know these eight blessings. And for us to give a summary of the last seven episodes, May I call on Rome to give us a summary? Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, once again, welcome to Red Talks. So allow me to give a little summary of the past seven episodes we've had for this month. So let me start with the most recent one we've had, which is entitled The Peacemaker. So we had that last Tuesday. So we talked about being a peacemaker and the opposite of that, which is a troublemaker. So how... We really delved into the uh, the definitions of that, how troublemakers avoid confrontation, but the peacemaker will resolve the problem and really get to the bottom uh, of it to find the solution. So we also talked about the peacemaker, peace, peacemaker and the peacekeeper. So we really um, went into their differences and why the three of them, the peacekeeper, peacemaker, and troublemaker are not the same. So we really uh, went into that. Uh, moving on. Our sixth episode was called The Purity of Heart. So there, the question stands, uh, what does it mean to have a pure heart? So why is it important to have purity as well? And why is it important to be pure beyond our appearances and our uh, facades? So moving on to our fifth episode, uh, the title was called Mercy for Mercy. So what is the difference of mercy and grace? Because uh, in our main verse, Matthew 5, verse 1 to 12, the word mercy was used instead of grace. So we really dealt into why the differences and why the, mer the word mercy was used. So we really delved into that and how Christianity only starts to become a relationship. Only then will it affect our lives in the right way and in the best way possible. And one of the ways uh, we can start is to be kind to the people who owe you and to be kind to the people who are indebted to you. So yun po yung na, ano natin sa mercy for mercy. And moving on to our fourth episode, uh, the title was called Hunger and Thirst. So we really, do, we here the question was asked, what kind of hunger do we have for God? As believers, do we eat to be full or do we eat to just enjoy eating? So the questions, what are we hungry for? What are we thirsty for? It is important to know what we are uh, hungry for and thirsty for because the more we know what we hunger for in God's word, the more we'll enjoy and the more we'll come to know him. So moving on, our third episode was entitled Meekness. So here we learned that meekness does not mean weakness. In fact, it is a strength. Uh, so meekness is never, it will never be a liability. It will always be an asset. So yes. And our second episode was called The Mourners. So here uh, we learned that grieving is normal. We were, we were reminded that there is no healing without mourning. But we also have to be careful because like the word of God said, there is a season for mourning because uh, some people think that when they're sad, they just stay that way. 
but no it's not like that at all we are not meant to just stay in one emotion for so long in, in one season for so long so when we are grieving we should learn to talk about it yeah so moving on to the first episode the first episode was called the poor in spirit so here it was mentioned that Jesus introduced a very new concept you know um him coming down to meet us so how god leveled with us and how if we want to be a part of it if we want to par participate all we have to do is follow him so yeah that is my summary for the last seven episodes and now we are on our eighth episode the final episode for this beautiful series the beatitudes so with that let me formally introduce the speakers here tonight uh sister rose and pastor willie chua Hello again, everyone. We thank the Lord because in the last seven episodes, we've been enjoying His presence in each of our individual homes. Salamat po, Lord. And I want to give a shout out to those people na even at their, at their work, no, they're watching and they're listening. Even to those, the Arsenan family who is traveling, they are also listening. So, uh, friends from all over the globe who's been replaying, we want to thank the Lord because nakikita po natin yung hunger ng bawat isa sa atin. And Pastor? <laughs> yes. Mapagpalang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Uh, finally, we arrived at the concluding episode for this series. And uh, we are thankful because uh, this series opens our eyes to, to better understand something that was familiar that and, and we get new understanding and that we are beginning to see why God values certain things more. For example, uh, uh, being peacemakers. Why? 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 Why does he value peace so much? And, and so we come to know more about God. We come to know how we can relate to other people and it corrects our perspective in life. Many times, no, when our perspective is wrong, iba po ang basa natin sa, 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 sa nangyari sa paligiran natin, we will react wrongly. Mm -hmm. And then we will not be effective. In fact, if we do not have the mind of Christ and we perceive differently, that is going to render our prayer life useless and, and helpless. And I will probably, the Lord willing, touch a little bit on that later. So again, Sit tight and allow the Holy Spirit to open up the word to all of us, including me, as he ministers to us. Thank you, Paul. I love that, Pastor. Let allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. no? And we've been enjoying that, mga kapatid. And so we thank the Lord. By the way, Pastor, we just would, I would like to remind them about uh, preparing their communion elements. For those who just joined us, this is our finale episode and every finale episode or end of the month we do our communion together so with that let me pray for everyone and then we will sing a worship song and then right away we will dive in to the messages coming from our lord jesus let us pray panginoon marami pong salamat tonight thank you so much lord for choosing us to Enjoy your word from the very first episode until the last episode of the Blessing series. Father God, thank you for the transformation. Thank you that the lives are changed. Thank you, Lord, that we are shaped by your words. Father God, thank you for us experiencing solitude under the noise. Thank you, Lord, for giving us messages that we can see beauty in the unfamiliar, that we can hear from you directly, that you are opening our eyes to the things that you wanted us to see. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness every Tuesday and Thursday. Tonight, Lord, I pray for the families, from the mom to the dad, to even to the ate and kuya and to the extended families, from the auntie to the uncle, even to the grannies and to the friends and best friends. I pray that every one of us will enjoy once again an intimacy tonight as we talk about persecution, 
as we talk about the blessings while we are under fire because we do righteousness. Lord, we welcome your word. Let us experience calmness tonight. And most of all, let us enjoy you. Father God, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, a very blessed evening tonight. And uh, tonight, we are going to tackle the eight blessings listed in the Beatitude. Oh, ang pang, pangwalong uh, pagpapala na binanggit ni Jesus sa kanyang uh, talakayan. So if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Ang Ebanghelyo ni Mateo 5, 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them. Teach who? Teach the disciples, okay? saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You will be, you are blessed when you, when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. So be glad and rejoice because your reward is great in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets. So were who were before you. And then, uh, punta po tayo sa, ano, uh, sa Evangelio ni Lucas. Let's move on to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 23. It says that, uh, Then looking up at his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, because the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry now, because you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, because you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, insult you, and slander your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and live for joy. Take note, your reward is great in heaven, for this is the way they, their ancestors used to treat the prophets. Now, tonight, we are talking about persecution. Alam po natin, ano eh, normally people don't want to, to talk about persecution. In fact, we are so afraid of that um, just the other day, two days ago. Uh, and maybe you have been guilty of that also. No, Two days ago, my, my mentor, my high school teacher sent me an urgent message. And the message basically reads that... Uh, the message re read that, uh, 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 please pray for the church in India. 20 churches were burned down last night. And tonight, want to destroy more than 200 churches in Olisabang province. They want to kill 200 missionaries within the next 24 hours. All Christians are hiding in villages. Pray for them and send this message to all Christians you know worldwide. Ask God to have mercy and our brothers and sisters in, in, in India, blah, blah, blah. And so when we hear about news of persecution, we panic and we started, you know, uh, seeking God. We started spreading the news. In fact, we spent more time spreading the news, asking people to pray than actually pray. And so I, I sent that to my, to my teacher. I replied to my teacher. Sabi ko, ma'am, good evening po. Lumang balita na to. Hindi lamang lumang balita. Lumang fake news po to. Since ano, eight years old na in 2014, umiikot na po. In fact, the, uh, the, the internet, they have to take down, I think, 7,700 7, times because it keeps circulating. And uh, one time I received that also. I was ministering in India. So I, 
I wanted to be sure. So I asked my Indian friends, I said, my guides, I said, where is Olisabang province? He said, oh, did you get that news? I said, yeah, how do you know? He said, so many people call and ask me, there is no Olisabang province in India. It is not even a real name or a real province. And yet what happens? All the Christians got sidetracked. They have diverted all their attention and spiritual energy on a fake news. The intention may be good, but we were lacking in discernment. Why? Because when we are fully developed in prayer, we are not easily moved. But then tonight, we want to better understand how we view a persecution. So in persecution, I want you to know that today, there are so many persecutions all over the world. You, I was persecuted because uh, I'm a Chinese who do not discriminate against non-Chinese. Uh, some people were persecuted because they, their skin is not white. Some people, they're, per, per, they're persecuted because they are not rich or they're not well-educated or they're not from the same school or things like that. There's so many kinds of persecution. Uh, but do you know that not all persecutions are the same? Not all persecutions are the same. Nobody likes persecution. All the persecutions are not pleasant to the victim. But not all persecution are the same. So let's go back and review what the Gospel of Matthew said, what Jesus basically said. There is a qualifier there. Ang sabi po niya in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 to 12, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of, underline that, because of righteousness. So it, what kind of persecution? Persecution that has something to do with their stand on righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you. That is a type of persecution. Persecute you. You in the left out ka, in unfriend ka. That is a form of persecution also. Falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Not because baki almera ka. Not because marites ka sa office mo. Not because of that. But because of Christ because of your relationship with Christ. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. I want you to encircle the word in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were with me. Now, I want to read from two more translations. No? First, the Amplified. The Amplified said, Blessed, comforted by inner peace and God's love, are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right. So they are persecuted because they are doing what is morally right. People will say, oh, hindi ka marunong makipagsama. <coughs> da? Oh, you're, you're in politics and then everybody is cheating and you refuse to sign. And they, they said, you're not a team player. Why did they persecute you? They, how, why are they pressuring you? Because of your stand on what is morally right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven, both now and forever. What does it mean? The kingdom of heaven is not just in the great by and by. The kingdom of heaven is also here and now. That's when we say, when Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is here. That when we implement the will of God in our life, we bring the kingdom of heaven on the scene, right on the spot. Heaven invading earth. Blessed uh Blessed or morally courageous and spiritually alive with life, joy in God's with goodness are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of your association with me. So ito pong qualifier, anong klaseng persecution? Yun may kinalalaman sa aking pananampalataya, may kinalalaman sa aking paniwala, may kinalalaman sa ati, aking pamumuhay ayon sa salita ng Diyos. Ito po ang qualifier, ito po ang tinutukoy, ang paksa po natin, ang tinutukoy at tinutumbok po ni Jesus dito sa, sa, sa usapan na ito. So, be glad and exceeding joyful for your reward in heaven is great, absolutely inexhaustible. Great means unlimited. For in this same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 
Then the message translation says, you're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. Very clear. Why are they persecuting you? Na provoke sila, na trigger sila, nakita nila, you are so committed to God at inangkin nila, imbis na na-convict sila o na ano, nakre-react sila. Bakit? Pinakmumukha mo ba sa akin? Ano? Pinaparamdam mo ba sa akin? Pinapakita mo ba sa akin na mas banal ka? Holier than thou ka? Actually, wala kang sinasabi. Halimbawa, may mga naglasingan o nagdodroga. Pare, sama ka, makisama ka. And you back off, bakit? Malinis ka ba? Nagma, nagmamagaling ka? Nagbabanal-banalan ka? You know, they, they sudden why? It's because your commitment to God provoked them. It's not because you provoked them. They did not dis- distinguish the conviction of the Holy Spirit or maybe their own conscience has rise up to condemn them. They didn't recognize that. Instead, they thought it's you. Dahil ikaw ang boses mo, ang itsura mo, ang mukha mo. So kala nila, tinatamaan mo sila. Kung minsan, nak- nak- nakukwentuhan po tayo dito. Ha? Pagkatapos, may mga narinig. Aba, ako yata ang tinatamaan niya. Actually, we don't know you. I don't know who's watching. Okay? Sister Marie's monitoring. She greets people. But I don't, I don't do that. I don't. I, I'm busy talking. I don't. I don't. You know. I don't monitor who's watching. So I don't know who's watching. So there's no way I'll be. Con- uh, I'll be talking about you or criticizing you if I like what a friend said. If the shoe fits, kung kasya sa yun yung sapatos, suotin mo na. Aminin mo na. Guilty ka jan. And then how do you respond to that? Lord, forgive me. Lord, Holy Spirit, yata na ko convict sa atin. Oh, there were times when like. One time I was uh, I was preaching in the US. I just arrived in that state. I arrived seven in the morning. Ten o'clock is the service. So after that, I washed up immediately. The, my host brought me to the church <clears throat> and I started preaching. So wala kami pagkakataon magkwentuhan. And when I preach, I talk about something. The pastor start, immediately stood up and stopped me and said, excuse me, Brother Willie, let me say something. And he talked to the congregation. We did not talk. We did not have a chance to talk. So some of you, kung akala mo, chinismis ko kay Pastor Willie at tinitinamaan ka, hindi kami nag-uusap. Kasusundo ko lang siya sa airport. Wala kaming pagkakataon para magkwentuhan. So you see, bakit? Some people will react. Their reaction reveals what is going on in them. Their reaction betrays their guilt. Right there. Their reaction betrays their guilt. So, Have we reacted simply because we are actually guilty of that? Okay. So the persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Meaning that, that, that if you are really committed to God, persecution will not intimidate you to live, get far from God, but it will drive you even deeper into God's kingdom. So kung nang, natatakot po tayo sa persecution, eh medyo, maybe we are not that committed to the Lord. Hindi muna ako magkocomment dyan, hindi muna ako mag-like dito kasi baka tirahin ako ng mga kaklase ko, ka-office ko, na iba ang value system nila, iba ang paniniwala nila. Okay. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down. Yung tinitira niya o binabara ka, throw you out, and speak lies about you to discredit me. The purpose when they attack you is because of the gospel you represent, because of the spirit of God in you, that, 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 that is the spirit of truth. So they said to discredit me, to discredit God. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they're uncomfortable. You become unbearable. They cannot stand your presence. Parang inis na inis sila sa'yo. Parang dahil ano, maybe na-expose, maybe they feel dirty, they feel simple, or they just don't feel comfortable. And they leave. Have you noticed something? Karamihan ng mga tao, especially the unbelievers, hindi po sila komportable sa, sa presensya ng mga religious people. Nagamdam mo ba? Kung medyo yung itsura mo, talagang religious na religious ang dating. Yung pananalita mo, religious na religious ang dating. Pati yung tono mo, hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
you know, hindi komportable ang mga tao sa iyo, pati pati aso takot sa iyo. Di parang parang lumulutang ka, parang you you unreal, parang yeah. And yet, have you noticed the sinners, the tax collectors, the prostitute, they are comfortable with Jesus? Bakit? Jesus is down to earth. Jesus hate the sin but distinguish the sin from the sinner. He loves the sinner and when the people know the sinners know you love me they are willing to leave their sin. In fact many times they will repent after they experience and tasted the goodness and the kindness of Jesus. Jesus did not say if you want me to treat you well bagong buhay ka muna. No no it's the other way around. Remember Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus was the tax collector collector hated by you know outcast no by his own people when jesus saw him on top of the tree trying to catch a glimpse of him jesus said come down i'm going to your house i'll fellowship i'll give you the honor he was so blessed kahit na galit but but ano siguro yung mga religious people sa lahat ng pinili yun pang maduming tao eh sa sa, sa he was so humble sa chaos after dinner sabi niya lord lahat ng ninakawan ko, ibabalik ko at sobra-sobra pa. Did Jesus ever talk, talk about, ay, nasa BR ka, ka medyo madumi, ha? magsisi ka, pupunta ka na sa MPN. Wala. Jesus just spent time with him. And he responded differently. He realized that, man, I'm so far. I'm so dear. Lord, I will repent. I will repent. See? There's a difference because uh, people are comfortable. So it says that, but you know, some people are not what, because of the sin in them and the stronghold in their lives, no? And, and, and so he said, um, you can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even for though they don't like it, I do. So basically, God is saying, people may not like you, but I do. People may not like your stand, but I do. People may not like your lifestyle, but guess what? You honor me. You glorify. I love it. I love it. Question is, do we live for the audience of one? Or are we looking for more likes and more, 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 more fun? If we live, if the purpose of our existence, just please God, opinion of men don't really matter. Right and wrong has nothing to do with majority. No, it does not. Right and wrong remains right and wrong kahit na walang naniniwala o ikaw lang naniniwala. I remember years ago, noong 1977, when I went to China to visit my relatives. At that time, China was still closed, no? under communist rule. And the people were so backward. So my, my cousin was asking me one day, you know, we were in the, on the beach. Sabi niya, so how did you come here? How many weeks did you travel? I said, no, I, I just flew from, 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 from Philippines, Manila. I just took airplane uh, less than two hours. I arrived in Hong Kong. And, and said, oh, uh, how's the airplane? I said, well, the airplane at that time can, could sit, uh, Cathay TriStar, I think could sit about 300 some people. Sabi niya, hey, hey. I'm seriously asking, do not make fool of me. I said, what do you mean? There's no such airplane that because ang nakikita lang yan, tora tora. Eh. Sabi ko, di, may airplane. Sabi ko, no, what do you mean that can sit 300 some people? You're pulling my, I'm older than you, don't try to pull me. Usapan matido, niloloko mo ako. Sabi ko, hindi, hindi, hindi. Totoo, ay may TV pa nga, may alalong nagalit. Sabi niya, talagang walang kwenta tong, tong galing Pilipinas kung kamag-ana, niloloko ako. So, umalis. Umalis siya. Two years ago, he was able to, uh, to you know, he, his application got approved and he was allowed to move to relocate to Hong Kong. Not only that, when he relocated to Hong Kong, he lived in a building near the old Kai Tak Airport, near the old airport. So, nakita na ang daming aeroplano. So when I went there, I met him. The first thing he did was to apologize. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because I could not imagine. I could not imagine because inside, I've never seen that. I could not. Now, siguro at that time, if you go to China, lahat sila hindi maniniwala. 
ako lang ang tanging parang siraulo na nagsasabi may ganitong does it make me uh, does it make the truth less truthful no it is still the truth kahit na walang naniniwala na may buwan walang naniniwala na bilog ang ang, ang mundo God is just saying, well, too bad for you. May mga hindi po naniniwala na may law of gravity. O sabi nila, ah, hindi ako, ano, hindi ako, hindi ako, wala akong pinakaralan eh. Hindi ko alam ano yung law of gravity eh. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It doesn't know. It doesn't matter whether you know or not. You just jump off the building. Tingnan mo kung hindi ka naniniwala kung lulutang ka o hindi. Wala. Whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, you jump up, the law of gravity will take over. You drop there. That's as simple as that. Now let's move on to Luke chapter 6, verses 22 to 23. Intro lang, medyo halos tapos ng oras natin. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Because of the Son of Man. In Amplified, they said, because of your association with me. So it's, so it's so clear. It's so clear the why of the persecution. Though this is the persecution. We are not talking about any other racial persecution or social persecution. We are not talking about that. We are talking about persecution for righteousness sake. So this is... What, but my question is, a lot of Christians will talk to me. Christians, they are persecuted. So they will talk to me, I'm being persecuted sa bahay. Bakit naman? Ganun, ganun. Pray for me. You know, uh, the Lord have mercy. Ang sama-sama ng makamag-anak ko kasi hindi Kristiyano, kaya pinipersecute ako eh. So nung tinatanong, pinapakwento, bakit naman? Eh kasi sinabi ko sa kanya, pupunta na sila sa sa, sa impyerno at saka yun, yun, yun rebulto nila. Binasa ko, ha? Binasak mo? Sa'yo ba yon Hindi. Mahal yun. Binili ng kapatid ko galing pa yata sa ibang bansa. Eh, sabi ng Biblia, hindi ba? So, binasak ko. Kaya pala galit sa'yo eh. You know, many of the persecution are self-inflicted because of our own folly. Yun sobrang gigil na we are imposing about what is right on people. We don't do that. We don't do that. Kaya yung mga iba galit sa mga Kristiyano, mga born against. Bakit? Lahat kontra, kontra lahat eh. Against this, against that. We condemn people. And Jesus does not go around condemning the people. So again, there is a lot of zeal, but not much wisdom, not much grace, not much love. Puro zeal lang. Just like what? The Pharisees. Just like the Pharisaic spirit. Now, we, 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 gigil na gigil. Eh, hindi pwede. Hindi. You know, that's why, mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, yun mga anak natin, yun iba, ayaw na mag-church kasi pinipilit nyo. Instead of making them fall in love with Jesus, nire-require po natin. Kung hindi, palo. Kung hindi ka sumama, hindi, kita, hindi ko i-release yung allowance mo. Kung hindi ka mag-memorize ng Biblia, Uh, hindi kita ga, you know, we just use that as a hostage, as a leverage. Guess what? Pag laki po nila, pag alis nila sa bahay, hindi hindi na sila public simbahan. Bakit? Na traumatized, traumatized po sila sa atin bilang mga Now, our intention is good, but the approach was wrong. Is the persecution we are experiencing because of righteousness? That means because of our commitment to God, because of the Christ likeness in us provoking persecution, lalo yung mga demon possessed. Galit hindi hindi mapakale. Like when Jesus go, nagmamanifest yung mga demon possessed. Eh. Kung wala tahimik lang, pero kung may lumapit na isang puno puno ng puspus ng Spiritu Santo, nakreact, nagmamanifest. Bakit po? Dahil the devil will never feel at home in the presence of God. You know, I I. One time I was uh, I was conducting a meeting. I was just talking about it uh, with a group of uh, people there. Yeah. One time I was conducting a meeting and Jos was with me. This was uh, maybe five years ago. We were in uh, a country in the Himalayan region. Do you know that that night in that room, there were about 20 plus, close to 
people demon possess simultaneously magnanwet meron nag slither sa sa floor na crawl parang is uh, uh, has may mga tumatahol may mga lahat na nagulat yung bata nagulat si Jesus ano to sa pwede mo possess bakit bakit dahil nandito tayo because of the holy spirit in us that provoked them now when jesus said that jesus basically said you know hey welcome to life jesus did not say I give you three steps to avoid persecution. He did not say that. He said, blessed are you when you are persecuted because of me, because of righteousness. What Jesus is trying to say is that bahagi po ng buhay. And when we understand that, babaguhin po natin ang pananaw natin at ang, ang panalangin natin. Tulad ang sinabi ko sa kanya, Lord, pray in sa India. Pray. You know, kung meron tayong nabilitaan, no, papugutan ng ulo yung mga tao o papatayin sila dahil ng mga terrorist, dahil sa pananampalataya nila. Anong tina, pinapanalangin natin? Panginoon, don't let them die. No, Lord, gonna, you know, what did the Word of God say, especially sa Revelation, in the end times? People will die for their faith. People will be persecuted for their faith. And let me ask you what. When you know that and you tell God, God, don't, let, don't do it. You're basically saying, kontrahin ko ang kalobo, kalooban o ang, ang salita ng Diyos. How should we pray then? Lord, I pray that you strengthen them that their faith will not fail. That for every life destroyed or killed, you will raise up an apostle, you will raise up an evangelist. For every Stephen that was stoned to death, let there be a Paul that will come out. That, na, yun mismo, yung mga terrorist, terrorists, and it has happened. It has happened. You know, uh, I hear the story one time, you may have seen that, no? There was, I think, 21, 21 or 23 naka-orange, no? Uh, Coptic Christians sa Egypt. Nahuli ng ISIS. Dinala po sa, sa beach, no? Pagkatapos, Bawat sila, sinasabi, okay, you renounce your faith. Ayaw, pinatay, pinugutan ng ulo sa beach. May, na internet viral yun eh. The beach. Yun ang nakikita natin. Then, when the news reached the, the hometown, you know what they did? They celebrated. They celebrated, bakit? Purihin ang Diyos na meron kaming kaluwal, uh, 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 meron kaming uh, karangalan na ang aming bayan ay meron benteng bayani ng pananampalataya. They rejoiced their perspective. Their reaction was completely different. And so, there was a reporter. Say, Pero may 21 eh. Ba't sabi mo 20? It turned out, yun, I think one of the last ones was not even a Christian. Nadamay lang kasi siya ang driver nila. Na, nung, nung hinarang, pati siya nadampot. Sabi, sabi nung, nung isang ano, and uh, one of the one of the terrorists nung pinatay na inangkin nila yung Biblia na basa and he had an encounter and became today he's still alive yung terrorist na yun and he's preaching the gospel nasa Turkey na yata siya and he testified he said that you know one of them yung driver ay hindi pa kristyano ngunit nung nakita niya mga kasama nila hindi sila takot right there and then sabi niya kung hindi sila takot parang excited pa sila Right there, tumanggap kay Jesus and said, Panginoon, okay lang sa akin. And he died also. He just got saved for a few seconds and he became a martyr for the faith. And this is a real story. Now, what I'm saying is that, why are you so afraid of persecution? The Word of God says, don't be afraid of those who can kill your body but cannot kill your soul or spirit. But we react, oh, ganun, ganun. you know, we become emotional. Our prayer is, should not be emotional prayer. It should be prayer of faith. So you pray, Lord, may nobody, may, may, may nobody uh, 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 back out. May they not weaken. May they not compromise. And may their, their valiant death touch the lives and, and, and convict the terrorists. Uh, there's another story in 19, uh, in year 2000 yata or 1999. I saw uh, somebody sent me a video. There was also because of the ISIS. No, there was also one uh, one Korean. Some of you may have watched that one Korean uh, Christian. 
he was studying and he was pursuing masters of divinity. Ngunit kulang siya, kulang po siya sa pondo pang pang matricula, tuition. So, may nagsabi sa kanya kasi at that time bawal pumunta sa Iran eh dahil sa gera, no? Pero kung makakalusot ka diyan, malaki ang sahod mo. Eh dahil nangangailangan po siya ng pera, he flew to Egypt yata and then from there travel on foot and sneak into Iran and work as a driver. But he was caught by a he was caught by a terrorist. So on that video, on that video, nandun siya blindfolded. And then binasa yung sentence niya. Pupugutan na siya ng ulo eh. And then, ano po, oh, anong masasabi? Umiyak. I, I will not be a Christian. I renounce my faith. I renounce my faith. Pero pinugutan din. Ang masama, ang ginamit po niya, yun Swiss knife. Hindi yun po, ganun, sinaksak dito at unting-unting tinanggal yung ulo. It's all on video. Finally, natanggal. And then, pat, nung patay na yung ulo niya, pagkatapos may mga uh, salitang Arabic, no? e may mga kanta. Yun parang ending niya. You know, I got a copy of that. I shot my Korean friend. Sumuka siya. Hindi na kayang sigmurahin. And then, bat, bata pat si na Jose. Eh. Umuwi ako. Tinawag ko sila, pati si Sister Cherry. Sabi ko, all of you watch that. Pinakita ko. Sabi ni Cherry, <coughs> Sobra, matroma tayo sa mga bata. I said, no, no, Han. Alam kong ginagawa. Ibig kong malaman, maintindihan ang anak natin. Ang yung being a Christian is not you go to a church with good music, funny preaching, a comfortable aircon, and shit. No. Remove all those comfort. If you have to die for your faith, will you? Sabi ko, papano sa mga apo natin? It will get worse and worse. But we should not be in fear. We should not be in fear. You know, this is the message very few people would want to talk about because it is not popular. It is not what people want to hear. But it is not my job to please you. My job is to tell you what is going on. My job is to teach the word of God. And Jesus says that there will be persecution in, book, uh, in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, 23 to 31. Well, I'll just summarize the first few verses. No? The context of this is Peter and John were arrested by the religious people and they were locked up. So then, uh, uh, and then they, 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 will, they will warn, no? nung papawala na sila kasi wala naman silang kaso. We learning and says, okay, if you, ever, if you ever preach in the name of Jesus, shiari kayo. And sabi na, bakit? Yun ang katotohan. Anyway, Pag-release po nila, verse 23, on the release, Peter and John went back to their own people in church in nang, natatakot at na, nakatag, nagtatago and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them, yung mga banta na natanggap nila. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. Sovereign Lord, Panginoon, they said. You made the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel to, in this city to conspire against the holy, your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. So even that, they said, God is in control. Then in verse 9 to 30, Now, Lord, consider their threats. Pakinggan mo ang mga banta nila. And enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. The message translation said, and now they're at it again. Tinitira na naman kami, persecute na naman kami, binabantaan na naman kami. Take care of their threats. Kayo nang bahala sa mga banta nila. And give us, bigyan mo kami ng tapang. Give us, give, give your servants fearless confidence in preaching your message. As you stretch out your hand to us 
in healings and miracles and wonders done in the name of your holy servant. Understand this. When they cry out to the Lord and say, Panginoon, ito ang binabantaan nila, ito ang banta nila. Modern day, anong karamihan? Lord, protect us. Lord, send your angels to protect us. Lord, convict them. Send them to hell. Lord, send me to another place. No. They did not God's ask God to take away the persecution. They said, narinig mo yun. Give us boldness. Make us stronger. Make us bolder. Let our faith increase. That is the solution to persecution. It's not for you to cave in, to retreat, to avoid the topic. No. Yes. And the strongest force of a believer is what? Walk in love. Speak in love. Love is not acceptance. Love is speaking the truth in love with grace. You don't condemn the sinner. Yes, you condemn the sin, but you love the sinner. And when people realize that you care for them, you don't con condemn them. That's not your job. It's a job of the Holy Spirit to convict people what's wrong. You just love on them. Jesus had, you know, was eating and drinking with the tax collectors and the so-called sinners. Na diring diri ang mga religiosong tao. Pero si Jesus hindi. Bakit? Ang nakikita po na Jesus, kaluluwa. Kaluluwa. Ang nakita ng mga religiosong tao, mga makasalanan. Parang ano, di ba? Kung ikaw ay nakita ng madungis na bata, ang dumi-dumi, hindi ko hahawakan. Ayaw ko, ma ayaw ko mag magpahalik kasi dumi-dumi eh. Puros putik eh. Pero kung yun bata ay iyong anak, ang iyong apo, wala kang pakialam kung gaano ka bantot, gaano. Yayakapin mo. Bakit? Alam mo, yun mga dumi, pwedeng hugasan at mawala. Pero yung bata ay apo mo. Sa ayaw at gusto mo. At mahal mo. Huwag mo itapon yung sanggol dahil madumi. No. Hinuhugasan mo para matanggal yung dumi, pero upang mat ang matitira, yung sanggol mo cute. Yun yung apo mo cute, yung baby mo cute. So same thing, that should be how we look at unbelievers and sinners. Understanding this will radically change our prayer life as well as how we look at our perspective and our response to all the challenges in life. Huwag po tayo matakot yung iwas dito, iwas dyan, tahimik muna ako kasi walang kristyano dito, baka tirahin. You know, you don't have to shout, you are going to hell, no. But you can, hey, Jesus loves you. And just, you know, don't be apologetic for, for your moral stand. The world is getting more and more wicked. But understand, Christianity has always been counterculture. Ang problema sa atin, we want to fit in. Makikifit in tayo eh. Counterculture nga tayo eh. Pagkatapos gusto natin, we behave, we talk, we act like the world. Then where's the distinction? We are the salt and the light. The light is useless if it is shown on a bright place. But the light can be irritating if it's in a dark place, but it can also help people see. The salt, sprinkled salt on a salty dish, Hindi, it's worse. But sprinkled salt on a bland dish, it brings out the flavor. Have we ever tried to ask, Lord, may this cup be taken away from me? Or do we seek God's agenda, heaven's agenda? I pray that we will, instead of lowering the standard, Lord, don't send me to, you know, don't send me to Afghanistan, the, wherever God wants to send you. I remember uh, when the Lord sent me to the Himalayan nation a few, few years ago, some friends talked to me, bro, may pamilya ka na eh. Sa Hong Kong na lang. Supportahan kita. Sa Japan na lang, supportahan kita. Sabi ko, eh, ang puso ko, iba eh. Sabi na, sabi na, delikado. You exercise wisdom. Whose wisdom? Heaven's wisdom? Or earthly wisdom? Is it, if, you, if you insist on going, I will not support you. Sabi ko, number one, the Lord is my provider. Number two, I, I was not asking for your support. Eh. And if you condition your support to my following you instead of my following God, 
You can keep your money. Thank you. I don't need that kind of support. And I think that, that I responded. I lost a friend, but I gained a family. I, I, I touched a lot of lives. When I was in Nepal one time, the, 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 the conference was attended by Christians from 31 churches throughout the nation. To look at the Chinese whom they never saw talk about Jesus. Well, that is the goodness and the, the, the favor of God. So understand, do not lower the standard. Sa, sa, sa panahon natin, mahilig tayo mag-lower ng standard para everybody happy, di ba? Sa school, panahon ko, first owner, second owner, third owner. So ang buong klase, tatlo lang ang masaya. Yun isa pinakamasaya in first owner. In second and third owner, hindi masaya kasi sayang, konti lang eh. Point something lang, sana first owner na ako. Pero at least masaya sila kasi first and second owner. Ngunit, may nag-iisip, gusto namin happy ka. Everybody happy. So anong solusyon? Ibaba natin ang standard. So lagyan natin, lahat may owner. Okay, o kung wala, hindi ka first owner, second owner, third owner. You have the cleanest handkerchief. You have the sweetest smile award. So you have you have the 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 beauty the most beautiful hair. You have the nicest voice. You have you're very courteous. Courtesy award. So lahat may medal, lahat may certificate. So what's the distinction? Wala. So everybody happy, but you lower the standard. In fact, there was one country I was in, actually in the U.S. They told me, you know, some of the people there told me, do you know what in what happens in 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 here? In their nursing yata, nursing exam. Saka, I think, a medicine yata. I'm not sure. Basta in, in one of their board exam, no? Dahil ang, ang mga top nature, yung mga asyano, yung mga immigrants. So, medyo sumasama in local. So, para masolve nilang problema, binaba po nila ang, ang standard. Paano? Habang nag-test daw sila, nag-board exam, computer yun eh. Biglang nag-shutdown yung computer, nag-off. Natakot naman yung tao, tinawag yung examiner. Ah, what happened to my computer? It shut off. The oh, that means you passed. When you reach a certain minimum age, like 75 passing grade, pag umabot ka na, shut down na. You don't have to answer anymore. So it's no longer who is the top notcher. But how, either you pass or you fail. Why? They are afraid to make a distinction. They want more people happy. So they lower the standard. Unfortunately, in our generation, even in church today, we lower the standard. We don't want to call sin by its name. We call sin, ano, may issue ako eh. May karamdaman ka, may problema ako eh. Kasalanan yun, may pangalan ni kasalanan. May struggle ako eh. You know, we, we, we soften. We change the word to less, less, uh, 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 less, less, controversial, medyo more acceptable. And we want to defang the devil, make the devil more acceptable, make the sin more tolerable. Brothers and sisters, that is wrong. If you want to, to unfriend me, go ahead. But I have the responsibility to tell you, man, that is not right. Okay. Now, we want to look beyond the persecution. So how do you deal with persecution? You look beyond the persecution. Galing lang po ako kanisa sa Pampanga. Nung paalis po ako sa Pampanga, ang lakas ng ulan. Na meron po akong choice. Mananatili na ako dito dahil ang lakas ng ulan. Bukas na lang ko uwi. Patawagan ko ng si Sister Marina, siya nang bahala. O oh, iniisip ko. Wala naman yatang ulan sa Bulacan, sa Manila. Ay dito lang yata eh. And I look beyond Pampanga. I look beyond the storm. And true enough, when I was uh, in Enlex, I passed through, by the way, I, by the time I, I reached the viaduct, there was no, no rain anymore. So, I mean, we have to look for why. For righteousness sake, in a wicked generation, we need to maintain the standard. John chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. The Gospel of John, Evangelio ni Juan, 15, 18 to 21. If the world hates you, sabi po ni Jesus, remember that it hated me first. 
the world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it. Kung nakikibaka ka, nakikibagay ka, hindi, ka, hindi sila galit sa iyo. But you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world so it hates you. Do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally, they would persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. They will do all this to you because of me. For they have rejected the one who sent me. That is God. So Jesus is saying, I'm not asking you to do something I don't do myself. Naranasan ko din yun. At dahil kayo ay malapit sa akin, pati kayo mapag-initan nila. Now, it's our choice. Ididinay natin siya. Hindi, 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 hindi ako talaga, hindi ako fanatic. Hindi ako ganun sa kristyano. Para lang walang magbatikos sa iyo. Christianity is counterculture, I said that. Don't seek to blend in and be like the world. Understand the why. The why is to maintain the standard for righteousness' sake. A Christian author by the name of Michael Hyatt says, people lose their way when they lose their why. Kaya may mga Kristiyano na biglang they live like the sinners, they live like the world, or, 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 or they backslide. Why? They lost their why. That's why they lose their way. They lost bucket. They lost the purpose. Ba- bakit ka? I don't know. Di ko alam na may persecution. Ayaw ko na. Ayaw ko na. Po, yun ang gusto ko lang pumunta sa langit, pero ang hirap pala eh. Huwag na lang. Dehin, dehin. You know? So, what is your why? Is it because of Christ? Is it because of righteousness? Then how? Papano? How do I look beyond persecution? Philippians 3, verses 13 to 14. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to, to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. So Paul here is saying that, Anong solution? I look beyond the, what I'm experiencing now. I look beyond yung, yung, yung mga persecution. I, I forget the past yung mga masasakit na pananalita nila, yun anong ginagawa nila sa akin. I don't talk about Or kahit na good things. The problem, in the, pro, the biggest problem of best is good. Why? Contento ka na. Alam mo dati, high school, high school, parang may mga tao, di ba? Hanggang yun, pinag, pinagmamalaki pa niya na na basketball champion siya nung high school. Tanda-tanda na, 70 years old ka na eh. Murus kalawang ng trophy mo eh. Mag-move on ka naman. Nakakalungkot naman yung bu- tanging buhay mo. High school trophy mo lang papakita, di ba? So, but we, we, we dwell on that. And Paul is saying, whether good or bad, I forgot what is in the past, I forgot what is behind, and I press on. Press on what? Press on means persigido, no? Press on to what lies ahead, and that is faith in action. Faith never talks about the, the past. Faith talks about things that will be. Things in the future. You don't know what will happen, how it will turn out. That's why we need the faith. So the looking forward, that can keep the faith, be in faith. And press on to reach the end of the race. Meaning, beyond the current difficulty, beyond the current persecution. What, what do I look for? You want me to look beyond the persecution? Ano mga hinahanap natin? Parang di ba yung mga gwardiya sa mall or sa ano, sinecheck yung bag pero hindi naman alam kung anong sinecheck niya. Basta pabuksan, may, may stick pa, ganun na. Okay, sige, sige, sige. Pero hindi naman nila alam kung anong hinahanap nila. Oh, ganun ang hihari eh. And sometimes we go through the motion. Okay? Pasensya na po kung may mga nakikinig. I'm not targeting the guardia. Oh. I have many friends who are, I have hundreds of uh, guards friends. No. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, 14 also says that, it says, uh, what to look for? He said, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize or the prize God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus to receive. In short, 
You are looking for the price. You are looking for the price. Sulit ba? Sulit ba? Parang ano, di ba? Parang parang hirap na hirap ka na sa school. May exam pa, may homework pa. Parang ang bilis na parang gustong gusto mo na mag-drop out. Pero naisip ko, nako, kung natapos, nakapag-graduate ako, may, meron akong magandang trabaho, meron akong magandang sahod, at makakaangat ako sa buhay, eh, titiisin mo. O so, sige, when? When? Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. That's the solution. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Para hindi ka matisod, fix your eyes on Jesus. Para hindi ka masidetrack, fix your eyes on Jesus. Para hindi ka magre-react. The pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before Him. So ano po ang, pre, pre, uh, what, ano bang ang target ni Jesus? The joy before Him. That is in the future. He endured the cross, scorning the shame. Tinis na yung mga pag-insulto, yung kahiyan, and sat down at the right hand of God. Consider Him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the reason Jesus did not react. Naisip na ba kung, kung, kung walang focus ang Panginoon habang bit, bit, karga-karga niya ang cross, no, may nagbabatikos at pumalag siya. Ikaw, oh, wala, kang, wala kang utang na up. Sige, mamamatay ka rin. Pupunta ka sa impyerno. Kung may nagdura sa kanya, dudurain din niya. Kung may sumampal sa kanya, papalag din siya. Pap- no. He was like a lamb. Brought to the slaughterhouse, meek. He absorbed everything. Why? He was focusing on the joy set before him. That is what carried him through persecution. And brothers and sisters, that is what we have to do. Look beyond persecution. We talk about the why. We talk about the how. We talk about the what. We talk about the when. It's in the future. It's in heaven. Diba? We read earlier in Matthew 5. And now, let's talk about the who. This is what sets us apart for what other people call fanatics or extremists. We have a who. We are not doing this because of a principle or, a, or an abstract idea. We do this because of who? Because of Christ. Because of Jesus. And as we review the eight blessings, who are the blessed? Those who are poor in heart. Why? They feel they need Christ. That's why they're poor in heart. And the Lord says, the kingdom of heaven will be yours. Those who mourn, why do you mourn? You mourn because you're being persecuted here. Masakite, di ba? Mourn because people hate you or kill your loved ones, kill your brothers and sisters in the faith. You mourn. But God said, your blessing is you will be comforted. Those death, those suffering, those persecuting were not in vain. Blessed are what? The humble. Those who walk in humility, for they will inherit them. Why, do you hum- Why are you humble? Because Christ was humble. Why are you humble? I submit myself to the word of God. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Not just persecuted for righteousness, but hunger and thirst. In the midst of this, you're saying, wala bang tama, wala bang banal, wala nang dalisay. And we are looking, craving for to do the right thing when nobody else is doing. I remember when my children were young and they would come home complete, uh, complaining. Say, Ba't si ganun kaklase ko? Everybody's doing it. Bakit bawal? Bakit hindi pwede? Sabi ko, others can you cannot others may you may not i don't care what kind we walk with god ikakanjawan na ko na mga klase ko who cares gusto mo ba mahal ka ng buong buong eskwelahan pero disappointed ang panginoon we have to choose kaninong opinion ang mas mahalaga sa atin blessed are the merciful why because you have why are you merciful? Because you have partaken, you have received, you have benefited from the mercy of Christ. 
Blessed are the pure in heart. Why? You will see God. Why? Why, why are you pure in heart? Because Jesus has purified me. The more I know him, the more I realize I have so many things I want to get rid of. Blessed are the peacemakers. Why? I want to bring the kingdom of God here. And blessed are the persecuted because of righteousness. Why are you persecuted? Because of me, because of Christ. So all these blessings are guaranteed for the eight, we can say suffering or the price you pay for the who. The who. We are blessed not because we suffer, but we suffer for his sake. We are blessed because we are humble. Why? Because we know one who is greater than us. We are blessed because we are merciful. Why? Because he has been merciful to us. So everything we do, ang pakay hindi para mapagpahala ako, baka, baka may biyaya. No, no. It's because I love Jesus. Because I love Jesus. Right now, before we partake of the communion, I would like to invite you to have a consecration prayer. Manalangin po tayo and ask Jesus to cleanse us. Marami po tayong mga pangamba, takot, maling akala, maring, maling pagtuturo, o mali, maling uh, hindi tamang uh, ugali kahit na kristyano na tayo. And it's not condemning. It is to cleanse us, purify us, sanctify us, and say, Lord, I'm all yours. I'm ready to do these eight things. Not so much because of the blessings that you promised, but because of Jesus. That when people see, they may not like me. But when they know that Christ is in me. Do you know that uh, meron akong mga kaibigan sa uh, kaklase sa, sa college dati dahil because of my faith, galit sila sa akin. Kinakansyaw ako. Hindi ako imbitado sa party nila kasi nagdodroga sila. Kaya boring yun eh. Boring yung inchik na yun eh. Ngunit nung many years later, when their marriage was falling apart, when they went bankrupt, when they are dying of a sickness, ang hinahanap ako. And when I saw them, so I, I was curious sometimes, no, he, when they are better na, so I said, why did you think of me? Sabi na, because you never compromised. Yung mga kasama ko, mga barkada ko, lahat they tell me what I want to hear. So I don't know kung ano talaga ang stand nila eh. Pero ikaw, alam ko kung saan ka nakatayo. And that's why I trust you more. So now I need your help. Will you help me? Mga mahal na kapatid, tayo, ang representative na ni Jesus. Whether people like our Jesus or not depends on how we live our life. Itong kwentuhan to eh, upang lalo natin makilala ni Jesus. Ngunit, inaamin ko rin po, medyo may kabigatan po kwentuhan itong, itong topic na to. But this is really, not to make you feel difficult, but this is to challenge you and to encourage you to say, hey, Lord, I want my life to count. I want my life to reflect your glory. Manalangin po tayo. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight. Marami pong salamat sa iyong biyaya, pagmamahal, at pagpanggap sa akin. Panginoon, Patawarin niyo po ako, bagamat sinasabi ko ako ay naniniwala sa inyo. Ngunit, ayon sa ating aking gawain, pananalita at pamumuhay, hindi po nakikita si Jesus sa aking buhay. Sa araw ito, inaalay ko po ang aking sarili. I consecrate myself. I set myself apart. Just for Jesus. Whether there's persecution or not, may people see Jesus in me. Even if people get provoked and offended by me and persecute me, I pray it, it is not because of my res irresponsible words or bad attitude, but it's because 
of my commitment to you. Father, I don't ask that you remove the persecution. I ask that you give me the faith to go through that until one day I finish my race and receive my prize. I do so for the joy that is set before us. Consecrate me tonight. Receive me tonight that I may live for you. Yes, Jesus, you died for me. Let me live for you now. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Now let's move on to a very, very uh, good flow is to have communion. Sabi po ni Pablo, for what I received from the Lord, I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, this is my body, which is for you. For you. For you. For me. For Mel. For Marie. For Rome. For Hannah. For Jos, for Marcel, for Glenn, for Jane, for Ansel, for whoever is watching, for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Why do we do this? To remember what Christ did for us. Shall we partake of this bread? And in the same way, after supper, he took up the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We celebrate the finished work of Christ. We do it not because it's a tradition. We do it to remind our thoughts what Christ did. He already paid the blood price. He already shed the blood. He already sealed our covenant with his blood. It's signed, sealed, and delivered. My job is to believe it and walk in the benefit of it. Lord, we drink this cup as a sign that we receive the washing of the blood over our lives and that we recognize the validity of the new covenant signed in the blood of Jesus. You said that life is in the blood. He shed his blood for us. He gave us his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you for it. And in his name we pray. Let's partake of the cup. God bless you tonight. I pray that you go back and think through what we have discussed. Hindi lamang kung tonight, but the entire series. If you absorb everything, you are supposed to see your life transform. Even me will keep improving. I'm not exempted. Walang graduation dito. Ah, okay ka na, exempted ka na, magaling ka na. No, no, no. All of us need this. Mm. All of us need to be poor in spirit. Mm. All of us need how to know, know how to mourn. All of us need to live as meek people. All of us should continue hungering and thirsting for righteousness and be more merciful with other people, flowing in the compassion of God for the world, being pure in heart, being peacemaker and being willing to be persecuted for righteousness sake. This is a no graduation lesson, but I guarantee you the more we walk in it, the more we get to enjoy the blessing of such a privilege. God bless you, Paul. Thank you. Sister Marie? Um, I hope that um, everyone is enjoying the presence of God 
in their individual homes as we are experiencing him in our home here in Cebu. Uh, tonight is another level. As we did the finale of the Blessing series, I encourage everyone to go back to episode one. And hindi po kayo matatalo. Panalo po tayo. Basta po binalikan natin yung mensahe ng ating Panginoon. I celebrate consecration tonight, Pastor. Thank you for leading us for cleansing because we need that. And tonight, uh, I want to thank the Lord because I am refreshed, I am reset, and the communion also complete it. So guys, uh, we want you to know that with the love of the, our Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Pastor, thank you so much all the time for leading us. And um, I know that everyone, in behalf of everyone who's been watching regularly, I know that um, everyone is thankful to you. And we pray, Lord, na uh, puspusin mo pa po ng Holy Spirit si Pastor Willie at marami pa pong pamilya ang matransform. At kami po na nanunood ay we are so privileged to be your ambassador, O Lord. And We will do the same. We will pay it forward. We want also to be used uh, for the glory of His kingdom. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. Mahal po namin kayo. We'll see you next Tuesday for another beautiful series. Binigyan na po ako ni, kami ni Pastor Willie ng, uh, ng hint kung ano yon and And the Lord will surprise you once again from nanay to tatay to ate and kuya. Ate Alicia, Sister Rich, welcome po. Sister Myra, Brother Glenn, Sister Lucita, Brother uh, Luis, Sister Jane, Sister Yab, um, Sister Yab, Sister Cleo, Sister Anita, Brother Jojo, and every one of you na hindi ko pa po nakikita dito but The love of the Lord is ito po yung commonality nating lahat. Ito po yung uh, nagbi, nag, nag, nagbibigkis sa ating lahat. Rome, you want to say something before we uh, close the the live? <laughs> okay. Um, ang nakuha ko naman po is in a world full of persecution and you know abandonment, um, do not persecute your faith in God. Yeah. Because you know, take away your clothes, your money, your everything within your arm's length. Like your faith is all you have, and that's all you'll ever need, right? Yeah. So yeah, and that feeling of rejection, the feeling of being rejected, it won't last long. But I think like your faith will only keep growing and growing for it to last forever. So yeah. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night, po. Mahal po namin kayo. See you po on Tuesday. for our August uh, series na Another Divine Kwentuhan. Mahal po namin kayo. Good night po. Salamat po. Bye. Good night, guys.